Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. This is video 8 in my short course on point set topology. And in this video I want to talk about a very very important topological property, that of compactness. And one way to think of compactness is it's a way of generalizing the notion of finiteness. Okay, so let's uh, motivate what's going on. So remember in a topological space, unlike in a metric space, we can talk about geometry but we don't have a notion of distances. Okay, so in a metric space you have a notion of a distance, but in a topological space you uh, do not. So certainly in a topological space you can't talk about notions such as, oh, a set has a certain diameter too, or something like that. But you can ask, well, can you think about the notion of being bounded in some way? So let's have a look at a little example here, and let's see what we can say about boundedness uh, from a topological point of view. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to look at the following unbounded set inside R. It is the set of uh, real negative numbers, so the open interval from minus infinity to zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the exponential function. Okay, so I've drawn the graph on the, for the negative reals here. Okay, so we're going to exponentiate these numbers here. And of course the image of that is just the open interval from zero to one. Okay, and you can check that, well, this firstly is a continuous map. And its inverse is given by log, okay? So the log also is continuous. So you have a bicontinuous map here, and it gives you inverse homeomorphisms from this unbounded set of uh, real numbers, real negative numbers, to this bounded set of real numbers here. So we see straight away that the notion of boundedness is not a topological property, okay? So that's something that uh, is important. Note here that in this case, the intervals here are both open. And what is the big, big surprise here is the following, okay? Even though boundedness is not a, a topological property, being both bounded and closed inside Rn, that is a topological property. And so let's just see why that is the case. And to do so, I need to introduce the notion of covers, which is very, very important in topology. Okay, so let as usual, X st here stand for a topological space, okay? So what do I mean by a cover for X? Well, basically, I just mean a collection of subsets, X alpha, say the alpha ranges through some index at A, such that the union of this collection of subsets of X is the whole of X. So basically, we're just expressing X as a union of subsets X alpha of X. And then this collection of these X alphas, rather, collection of these X alphas forms a cover for X, okay? So if all these X alphas, these subsets, happen to be open subsets of X, then we call that an open cover. Okay, so that's the first definition. Cover and open cover. Okay, so suppose we're given such a cover, open or not. Okay, X is the union of X alpha. So the notation that we usually write, rather than just writing a sub-collection of, uh, or a collection of subsets, is to just write X equals the union of these X alphas. We can ask for a sub-cover of this cover here. And what that means is that we just pick out some of these x alphas, let's say x beta, as beta ranges through some subset b of a, such that that sub-collection is also a cover. So x equals the union of those x betas. Okay, so that's sub-cover, where you just have some of these x alphas, but their union is still the whole of x. Okay? And we're going to say that this sub-cover is finite if the number of these x betas, okay, is finite. In other words, this set B here is finite. Okay, so the subcover is finite if B is. Okay, so let's do a little example to make sure we all understand this notion, which is very important in topology. Okay, so suppose we look inside the reals. This is a topological space with the Euclidean topology, and we look at all uh, positive integers n. We can look at the open interval from minus n to n, and as we take the union of these uh, over all positive integers, of course, you cover all of R. And since these are open intervals, they're open, so this is in fact an open cover of R. And these intervals, actually, they're nested, so they just get bigger and bigger, and they eventually their union is all of R. Okay, so that illustrates uh, uh, definition part A. What about part B? Let's look at finite sub uh, covers, okay? So we have a finite sub cover, we just have a finite number of these nested intervals, okay? And if you look at a finite number of them and you take the union of them, of course, the union would just be the biggest one, which is one of these. And of course, you can see that that is not going to equal all of R. So in this case, no finite subcover of this open cover is going to be, uh, or no, 
no finite subset of this collection is going to give you a finite subcover. Okay, so any unbounded subset of an R n, in fact, using this argument, we can show that it has an open cover such that there is no finite subcover. Okay, so if you have an unbounded set, you can look at ever larger open balls. Okay. And of course, as they get bigger and bigger, as long as you make the diameter go off to infinity, okay, uh, that will induce an open cover of your unbounded set. But since it's unbounded, no finite subcover, so no, no finite collection of those open balls, are such that you will completely cover that unbounded set. Okay, so that kind of motivates actually how we're going to get some sort of control over this notion of boundedness and approach it from a topological point of view. Okay, so this comes to the definition of compactness. We said that X is compact if, unlike in this case here, every open cover has a finite subcover. Okay, that's the definition. Every open cover has a finite subcover. Now, to talk about open covers, of course, what do you need? You just need the notion of a topology. Okay, so all these things are defined in terms of topological data, the things which I use to define a topology. And so, of course, this is just a topological property. In other words, if uh, two topological spaces are homeomorphic, either they are both compact or they are both not compact. And it's quite easy to show that, uh, to see why that's true. If X is compact, so you have this condition holding, okay, and you have a homeomorphic space, that homeomorphism or allow you to show that this condition also holds for the homeomorphic space as well. Okay, so uh, that's the definition of compactness. And now this is what we're going to use to show actually the fact that uh, closed and boundedness is actually a topological property. Okay, and this is the famous heine borel theorem. Okay, so a subset of Rn is compact when, okay, it turns out it's compact precisely when it's both closed and bounded. Okay, so in other words, you can characterize this notion of closed and bounded. Okay, so bounded normally uses the notion of metric. Okay, so um, when you look at this uh, condition here as is, okay, it seems like it uses the metric, but it turns out that you can get rid of the metric concepts used to uh, define this condition by using this concept over here, which is purely topological, and hence show that this closed and boundedness inside Rn is a purely topological property. Okay, So this is a very, very interesting fact and a very important fact about um, uh, the topology of Rn and subsets of Rn. Okay, So before I move on to make some, uh, uh, to say something about the proof of this, uh, I want to give a little bit of remarks about um, some things that you should be uh, careful about. Okay, So the first thing is that compactness is an absolute property. Okay, it's an absolute property of a topological space. So what does that mean? We define it for a topological space. Okay, so in other words, if you have a subset of a topological space, okay, well, it's not defined for um, the subset as just a subset. Okay, it needs to be defined on both the subset and with the topology on that subset. So of course, it means that subset with the subspace topology. Okay, so it's an absolute property. Being closed, however, is not an absolute property, okay? Uh, to say that a topological space is closed actually doesn't mean anything. It's a vacuous condition. Because remember, in any topological space, okay, the empty set is always open, okay, by definition. And so the complement, the whole space, is always closed, okay? So here, this is actually a relative notion, okay? So you can only talk about closed sets, or it's only meaningful to talk about closed sets when you talk about a subset of a topological space. So being closed is a relative concept, it's a relative topological concept, it's relative to the ambient space. So in this case, the ambient space is Rn. Okay, so this is a compactness, it's an absolute property, and closed is a relative um, uh, concept. Okay. So I don't want to prove this theorem, it's a, a direction to show that uh, closed and bounded implies compact is uh, somewhat hard. Although in the case where n equals 1, it's a little bit easier and you can have a look and see how you can prove it in that case. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say some words about how compactness implies closed and boundedness. So you've got a feel for why these notions are related. So the first thing is that I want to show that compactness implies bounded. Okay, that's the first thing I want to remark. 
And to do that, I just need to show that um, the contrapositive. So if it's not bounded, then it's not compact. And in fact, we've seen this fact before, okay? It's basically just an upshot. If you're unbounded, then you can find some open cover which does not have a finite subcover. Okay, so what I next want to show you is how compactness also shows that you're closed inside Rn. The next proposition shows that any compact subset of Rn is closed. Okay, so let's see what the statement is. So now we're going to look at any Hausdorff space X. So in particular, Rn is Hausdorff. Okay, so it applies to that case here. And we'll look at subsets of it which are compact. In other words, compact in the subspace topology. Then that subset is actually closed inside the ambient space X. Okay, so I want to show you the proof of this because the proof very nicely uses, uses the axiom for compactness. Okay, so let's suppose the picture is as follows. We have our ambient space X here and we have this uh, subspace here Y which is closed. Um, which is or rather compact and uh, we assume that this space here is Hausdorff okay so what we want to show is that this Y is actually closed and to do that we just have to show that of course the complement is open and the way we show that the complement is open is that we'll show that in fact for any point that's in the complement such as the X featured here you can find an open neighborhood of it which is completely inside the complement because then if we can do that we take the union of all these open neighborhoods of all the points inside Y complement of course that union of open sets is an open set and it's also the complement of Y and since the complement of Y is open then Y must itself be closed okay so that's the goal of what we want to do okay so let's see how we're going to do that so what we're going to do is as follows okay we've picked an X that's in Y complement and for each Y inside Y we're going to do the following Firstly, we have to use the Hausdorff condition. The Hausdorff condition says that you can separate these two points. They're distinct because this is not in Y, but this is in Y, okay? So let's separate them with open neighborhoods, okay? Open neighborhoods like that. Okay, so suppose this open neighborhood here is called XY, and this open neighborhood here is called BY. Okay, so that's the first thing we'll do. Now, of course, we're going to do this for each and every point inside Y. So at the end of the day, we're going to get an open cover for Y. Okay, so this is an open cover if we use the subspace topology. Okay, so how do we get that? We basically just take all these VYs and intersect it with Y. All these VYs, they're open, okay, inside X. So when you intersect at Y, that's an open of Y. And of course, if you take the union of these, okay, you'll contain all these little Ys because this VY is an open open neighborhood of little y and little y is also in this big y so the union of these contains all the little y's inside big y so it contains all of y okay so this here is an open cover of y okay great we have this open cover of y so basically you're taking each point in these open neighborhoods so you've got little circles like this lots of them around like that and basically all these open neighborhoods they'll cover y so when you intersect with Y, you'll get an open cover like this, okay? So now we're going to use the fact that Y is compact to replace this open cover, which in general will be infinite, with a finite subcover. Okay, so Y is going to be actually contained inside. You can find a finite number of these points, okay? Y1 up to Yn, such that the corresponding open neighborhoods, Vy1 up to Vyn, is actually going to contain, that union is going to contain Y. Okay. And of course, if you intersect all of these with Y, then the union will be actually equal to Y. Okay, so you're going to replace this with a finite number of these, okay? and that will already cover Y. Okay, so, but what we wanted to do was that we wanted to find an open neighborhood of X, okay, which was inside Y complement. So how do we do that? What is that open neighborhood of X that we want to do? So corresponding to these uh, v, uh, points Y1 up to Yn, remember we had open neighborhoods of this uh, x, okay? So this one might correspond to this one here. Another point might give you a different one, like this here, okay? And another one might give you a different one, like this one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider this finite intersection of these open neighborhoods. And the important point to remember here is the axioms of a topological space set that the, a finite intersection of open sets is still open. And since they're neighborhoods of x, they'll still all contain x, and so this will be an open neighborhood of this little x here okay so that's the first point 
So the next point is the following, okay? So each of these open neighborhoods is disjoint from the corresponding open neighborhoods inside here. In other words, they're in the complement of that. So even if you take the union of these and look at the complement of that, okay, that will contain this intersection here, this open set here, okay? So if you take the union of all those, that finite number of uh, open neighborhoods of y1 up to yn, and look at the complement, that will contain uh, this uh, open neighborhood, the intersection of all these x, y's, okay? But remember, we have this inclusion here. This essentially gives you an open cover for y. So if you complement this inclusion relation, of course, it flips around. So the co complement of this union is contained inside y complement. So what we have shown here is the following. We found an uh, open neighborhood of x, that's the open neighborhood here, here which is completely contained inside the complement of y. And that's exactly what we needed to show. Okay, that's what we needed to show here. Because taking the union of all these open neighborhoods gives you an open set which is the complement of y, hence showing that y is closed. Okay, so let me just make some remarks to see where the compactness really is used. It's passing from this uh, arbitrary open cover, which usually will be infinite, it's infinite as soon as y is infinite, to this finite subcover. Okay. And the importance of being able to replace this with a finite subcover is because here you have to show this is open, right? This intersection of open sets is open. Okay? So if you intersect a finite number of open sets, this will be open. But if you intersect an infinite number of open sets, it might not stay open. Okay? So that's the reason why you must be able to replace that uh, open cover, that arbitrary open cover with a finite subcover so that this intersection here of the corresponding open neighborhoods of this x is finite and hence remains open. And that gives you the proof of this proposition. And it's a very classical way of using the axiom of compactness. Okay, this is a typical way that you use it in proofs in general, in points and topology. Okay, so let's look at some more basic facts about uh, compactness. So proposition two here is about uh, continuous images of compact sets. Suppose you have f from x to y is a continuous function, and the domain here is uh, compact. Then in fact, f of x is also compact. Okay, so f of x firstly is a subset of y. So of course to say it's compact we need the topological space and that means that we have the subspace topology on the image. So another way of saying this which is rather nice is the continuous image of a compact set remains compact. Okay, so this is rather stronger than being a topological property. So um, certainly it's true that if you have uh, homeomorphic topological spaces then one is compact implies the other one is compact, but this is saying more. If you have just a continuous image of a compact uh, space, then its image is continuous. And uh, I won't write down the proof here, but let me just briefly indicate how it works. So really, you just use the definition, so it's quite easy, okay? So you want to show that f of x is compact, so basically you want to say that if you're given open cover of this, you can find a finite subcover. So where do you find a finite subcover from? Of course, you want to use the fact that x is compact, okay? So you have an open cover of f of x, open cover of f of x, so it has the subspace topology. So each of those open sets in the open cover comes from an open set inside y. So for each of these open sets inside y, of course, f is continuous, so its inverse image inside x is also open, okay? And you can see quite uh, easily that the union of those inverse images is all of x. In other words, you get an open cover of x. Okay? And since you have an open cover of x, x compact means that you can find a finite subcover, and that finite subcover tells you which of the open sets in your open cover of f of x are the ones that you need to cover this f of x. Okay? So I'll let you work through the details of that. But what I want to tell you about instead is the following important sort of corollary, okay? which gets used quite a bit in mathematics, okay? Suppose now the continuous function actually that you're looking at is uh, f from x to the real numbers, okay? So this you clean one dimensional space here. So that's your continuous function. And again, x is compact, okay? So the important uh, corollary, and this is something that you would have seen, I guess, in the case of uh, where x here is not just some topological space which is compact, but rather a closed and bounded space, is that f of x, the image of f, has both a maximum and a minimum. Okay, so before I go on and give you an explanation for why this is true, okay, I want to show you how uh, compactness really is a generalization of finiteness. So this allows you to, um, to interpret that 
in this way. Okay, so suppose x is a finite set. Okay, then f of x, its image is just a the finite set of values that it takes. Okay, so of course if you have any finite set of rule uh, of real numbers, okay, you can always find a maximum and minimum because you can inductively sort to find the biggest one and inductively sort to find the smallest one. Okay, and what this is trying to tell you is that this is true actually if your domain is not just finite but in fact it's compact, then you know you always have this maximum and a minimum value. Okay, so this is a very important fact that you should have seen in various settings in your calculus course, okay, and it holds in this much more general sort of topological setting. And the proof is easy enough from what we've seen already, so we're going to use uh, both this proposition here, which tells us the image is firstly compact inside R. And the heiner borel te theorem tells you what does it mean to be compact inside R. It just means that it's closed and bounded. So f of x is closed and bounded. Okay, so how's that being closed and bounded related to the fact that it has a maximum and a minimum? Well, the fact that it's bounded means that firstly there's an upper bound, and the property of the reals it means that it has a lowest upper bound. Okay, it also has a lower bound, and the property of the reals means that it has a greatest lower bound as well. Okay, so that's what boundedness gives you. Okay, so what about the closed bit? Okay, so the greatest lower bound might not be uh, in there, and the lowest upper bound might not be in your set of uh, or the range of values. But the point is that this is closed. Okay, so since it's closed, actually the lowest upper bound has to be actually in your range of values. Okay, and so that tells you that uh, since it's in your range of uh, values, it's actually the maximum. Okay, and the, the greatest lower bound is actually going to be your minimum. Okay, so that's why closed and bounded uh, subsets of R both have maxima and minima, and that gives you this rather important fact here. Okay, so I want to finish off this video with another very important fact um, that also relates compactness with closedness. Okay, so they're very, very uh, strongly related concepts, as you've already seen here, uh, one direction, and I want to show you how it plays out in the following setting. So here we're going to have a compact set X, and inside it I have a closed subset Y. And what I want to say is that if you have a closed subset of a compact set X, then that closed subset Y is itself compact. Okay. So if you have trouble trying to remember the content of this, maybe you want to think about this in the setting of metric spaces or um, subset of Rn. So suppose you have a closed subset of Rn, uh, or subset of Rn X, which is compact, so it's closed and bounded. So if you have a closed and bounded set, and inside there you have a closed subset of that closed and bounded set, well, the thing is, it's still closed and bounded, so it's actually compact. Okay? So that's the proof in the case where you have uh, subsets of Rn, okay? uh, if we assume the heiner borel theorem. But this is actually very, very easy to prove by itself. And there's just one small little uh, observation which makes it work, so I'll show you how that works. Okay? And it's good practice to see uh, the rather, uh, at first, strange axiom that's involved with compactness. Okay? So to show that Y is compact, what do we need to do? Or we need to show that given any open cover of this Y, you can find a finer subcover. Okay, so suppose we have an open cover of this Y. Okay, so what does it mean to be an open cover of Y? So firstly, Y is a subset of X. Okay, so what are the open sets? The open sets have the form an open V alpha inside X, and you intersect it with Y. So you can find all these V alphas in, so open inside X, such that when you intersect it with y, and you take the union of them, that gives you an open cover of y. Okay, so that's what we're going to assume. We've got this open cover of y. Okay, so we want to find a finite number of these, such that they still cover y. Okay, so how do we do that? And of course, we should use the fact that x is compact. So we need an open cover of x. Okay, so how do we get an open cover of x? Now firstly, these V alphas are open, so we can use that to try to form an open cover of X. To look at the union of all these V alphas and what do you get? Well, the, since the unions of V alpha intersect Y as Y, certainly the union of these V alphas will contain Y, it will be at least Y. Okay? But what's outside Y? What can you do with what's outside Y? And this is where we use the fact that Y is closed. Well, Y closed means that Y complement is going to be open. So outside Y, we can cover the rest of it, everything else, with this open set Y complement. So we can see quite quickly that if you add to this union of this V alpha, this Y complement, this open set here, you will actually uh, cover the ambient space X. Okay? And now it's very easy to try to find the finite subcover that you want for this. Okay? So what do you do? Well, this is compact. So you just need a finite number of these to actually cover 
um, x. So you can say x is the union of v alpha 1 up to v alpha n and maybe y uh, complement. Okay? So maybe you don't even need the y complement, but throwing it in uh, doesn't change the fact that this is a finite subcover. Okay, it will still cover. Uh, maybe that already covers, but uh, we can throw it in. So let's just throw it in there like that. And now, of course, this tells you that the corresponding uh, open sets here will give you an open cover of y. So what that means is that basically you can intersect this equation with y, and what you get here is that y is equal to the union of what? Well, y intersect y complement is empty set, so you don't get anything there, but you can intersect all of these with y to get v alpha i intersect y, and there is some of a finite number of these open sets here, okay, open subsets of y, and that gives you a finite subcover. And that proves this proposition 3 here, that if you have a closed subset of a compact set, then this closed subset itself is also compact. I hope you enjoyed this short course on point set topology.